Welcome to Element Hobbies. I regret to inform you that I have a really serious problem. Ariette the Beguiler is going to make me lose all my friends. And why? Because I plunged the depths of Scryfall to find the optimal build of packages with the goal in mind to steal as many permanents as I could. This includes creatures, but also planeswalkers, enchantments, you name it. And now I'm going to pass that forbidden knowledge on to you. Ariette the Beguiler is a 4 mana value 4-4 four, four human warlock with lifelink. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to that aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent for as long as that aura is attached to it. So in this deck we're going to run a wide variety of aura types to steal whatever the frick we want, besides ridiculously costed stuff. Those we're going to turn into junk. The link to the full list will be in the description below, so check that out if you want. Without further ado, let's beguile in style. Flickering Ward, Launch, and Shimmering Wings are all low-cost auras that you can get back to your hand after or as the creature is dying. Since you don't own the creatures, you don't really care if they die. But the enchantment that comes back over and over, now that's value. These cards will give you some control over mana dorks and big creature tokens, but most importantly you can give them offensively for your big attacks to your own creatures, and they'll provide evasion or protection. We'll get more into how your alpha attacks will go later on, but for now, let's talk about Demonic Embrace and Angelic Destiny. These will both turn whatever you take into big, big threats. Again, you can play fast and loose with whatever you take with these cards, since you'll get the important part back, which is the enchantment. Necrotic Plague is kind of like a targeted The Abyss. You won't kill as many creatures in the long run, but you get to pick and choose which can be more valuable, especially if your meta has lots of creature token decks. Blessing of Leeches and Cho Mano's Blessing start off our cloaking cards, which all aim to make the creatures you take more protected. Ideally, you'd want to use these cards on creatures you would prefer to stick around. Cho Mano's Blessing will give protection from a particular color at instant speed, while Blessing of Leeches will give you infinite free regenerates, only at the cost of one life per upkeep. Gift of Doom will let you sacrifice one of your other stolen creatures to steal another creature, and then give that creature death touch and indestructibility. Shielded by Faith will give Indestructible, but can also bounce to around literally any creature as it enters the battlefield. Timely Ward can give Indestructible at instant speed if it targets a player's commander. Be careful with this as players can get salty if you steal their commander. On the other hand, if you cared about people getting salty, you shouldn't probably play this deck. I then run a package of 5 cards to prevent the creatures in question of being targets to some degree, starting with Alexei's Cloak, Diplomatic Immunity, and my personal favorite, Spectral Shield. Cepheid's Embrace and Protective Bubble are 4 mana, so you can grab a bit larger things, but all the Cloak cards are really good at grabbing utility creatures that you want to abuse over and over again. We run a package of enchantments to steal specific card types, starting with artifacts. Zoetic Glyph, Relic Bind, and Might Stone's animation are all enchant artifacts, so you'll need to use these for any artifacts you want to steal. You are somewhat limited in what can steal enchantments. If you really wanted to steal enchantment, the card is your best option. I, however, am the contrarian, and I choose to run feedback instead, because I'm weird like that. You're even more limited with stealing planeswalkers. You can run any of the talent cycle from the March of the Machine commander decks, either Elspeth's, Teferi's, or Liliana's. I run Elspeth's talent, as I think that's probably the one that will be able to get the most use regardless of what Planeswalker it steals. Teferi is less usable, but it does have a mana value of 5, so it can steal a bigger range of Planeswalkers. Uh, feel free to run whichever one you prefer. This is a package of enchant permanents that will hit anything that Ariette can steal, starting with Curator's Ward, which will steal anything 3 mana value and under and give it hexproof. Runes of Sustenance, Mortality, and Flight will jack anything with 2 mana value or less, which is handy for various mana rocks and dorks at worst. They also replace themselves by drawing a card and are not bad if you put them on something of your own that you intend to have stick around. Sage's Reverie, Idolized, and All That Glitters are auras that will buff a creature equal to the number of auras you have, roughly. You can use these to steal a creature and try to kill people with it, or just put this on one of your own creatures and go to town. Fallen Ideal doesn't super fit in this category, but I think it is the best spot for it. You can use it as a sack outlet for your other stolen creatures as the game plays out, or use it for your own creatures as an alpha strike. 
The old Ariat, Ariat of the Charmed Apple, is really, really good and will win you the game in a couple turns if left unchecked. She's so good you could almost build a deck entirely around her, but who would do such a thing? We start the ramp with a fairly basic package in the three relevant guild signets and the three relevant guild talismans. Hero of Iroas and Transcendent Envoy will both reduce your aura cost by one. Starfield Mystic will reduce all enchantments cost by one and Killian Ink Duelist will reduce them by two. Simple, but powerful. Xur the Enchanter and Hannah Ship's Navigator will both generate value over time either by returning auras from your graveyard to your hand, or by playing them straight from your deck. Hilliod the Radiant Dawn and Invasion of Theros are both flip cards who work similarly, by returning auras from your graveyard to your hand, or searching for them in your deck. Once flipped, Hilliod the Warped Eclipse will let you cast all your spells at flash speed and at a discount. Afara Ever Sheltering will let you draw cards when your enchantments enter play, not just cast. Keep that in mind when using Xur or some of the cards that come back into play automatically. Core Spirit Dancer, Mesa Enchantress, and Sram Senior Edificer will all get you a card when you cast an aura. Classic stuff. Lord Skitter's Blessing will give you a tiny buff, but it will also be a Phyrexian Arena for one less mana than a Phyrexian Arena. I wouldn't worry too much if you don't have this card, you could probably just replace it with a Phyrexian Arena, or anything else that will draw you a card each turn. Take Flight will let you steal a creature, or just enhance your own, and then whenever that creature attacks, you draw a card. This is all pretty simple stuff, but it is all very powerful. Sometimes there are creatures you need to get rid of but can't steal. So we turn those things into other things with cards like Witness Protection or Into Deep, which will turn stuff into NPCs or clues. Minimus Containment and Imprisoned in the Moon will turn creatures into treasures or a waste. Take that creatures with insane mana values. Aura Finesse and Fumble will both let you maneuver your auras around the board in instant speed. This is helpful when a creature you've enchanted is about to die, or to move all the buffing auras to one creature in preparation for a lethal attack. Codsworth Handy Helper and Arden Intrepid Archaeologist will also let you bounce around auras, though only during your turn. Codsworth is really, really good in this deck, as it gives area ward as well as helping you cast your auras. Halvar God of Battle will let you move stuff as well, but also give all your stolen creatures double strike. There is a flip side to this card in that Sword of the Realms. It isn't really that good, but it is there if you want it. I can't imagine a situation where the sword is more useful than the other side. Retether and Greater Auromancy will just give you some staying power, either by returning all of your auras or just giving all your aura shroud. Greater Auromancy also has the crazy benefit of giving your stolen creatures shroud. I run three wipes, starting with Winds of Wrath, which will destroy all creatures except for your enchanted ones, and I guess if your opponents have enchanted ones too, but uh, weirdly enough, most of your creatures will be enchanted. Huh. Inner Demon will steal a creature and wipe smaller creatures. This is good because token strategies can be very good against you, since you can't control all of their tokens. Except Asinine Antics, which will turn all your opponent's creatures into 1-1 with rolls on them, which will then also give you control of them. Mamma Mia, that's a lot of rolls. This deck is a bit light on utility lands, running just Hall of Hilliod's Generosity and Sarah's Sanctum. Uh, Sarah's Sanctum is like 250 bucks or something, so feel free to just not run it or write Sarah's Sanctum on a planes card and run that. I run my basic Esper mana base, which includes four lands that can get all three colors that I need then eight of each Azorius, Demir, and Orzov lands. I finish off the deck with three islands, two plains, and one swamp. The biggest challenge to this deck is that you're going to be the obvious target at the table. People hate having their stuff stolen, and you are giving off kind of a big jack move type vibes when you put Ariette the Beguiler on the table. Also, if there are a lot of typical enchantressy decks in your meta, there are probably a few decks running heavy anti-enchantment cards, which you will probably bear the brunt of. On the plus side, you steal everyone's stuff, and then you get to laugh at their empty boards. But you can also win really quickly through big aura buffs or through the original, very powerful Ariette. I made a deck guide for Ariette of the Charmed Apple a little while ago, and it's one of my best videos, I think. 
So check it out if you want some more enchanting ideas, feel free and take a look at it here. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these type of deck videos and I will see you around.